The 2012 Lawyers Weekly Australian Law Awards, proudly sponsored by List Day Barristers, showcases individual excellence in the legal profession, from its most senior members to the stars of tomorrow. Please join us on the 27th of July at the Sofitel Hotel in Melbourne for the Blue Ribbon Night on the Australian legal calendar. Hello, I'm Stephanie Quine with the Weekly Law Report. Here are the top stories for the week. A Sydney lawyer managed to both conquer and seduce at this year's New South Wales Golden Gavel Awards. Joel Cook from McCabe Terrell Lawyers proved charming, confident and borderline inappropriate as he discussed the topic small bars and fast cars, the cruisy road to partnership. Uh, Your Honour, I'm afraid that I'm uh, not instructed on that matter. <laughs> if it pleases the court. As the fifth of ten speakers, Cook won first prize for his golden rules, seduce your superiors, exploit your subordinates. He will represent New South Wales at the National Golden Gavel Awards in Adelaide this September. The Australian Legal Sector Alliance has joined forces with an environmental company to help its member firms report their carbon footprint. Greenstone Carbon Management helped Oz LSA set up an online portal for its 38 member firms. According to its latest report, six of the eight executive member firms reduced their electricity consumption by up to 33%. Overall paper consumption also reduced by 9%. Air travel, however, remains a concern with its green impact still increasing. A law professor with ANU has hit out at large law firms, claiming their culture is incompatible with notions of work-life balance. Margaret Thornton received $146,000 from the federal government to survey the job satisfaction and health of lawyers. Thornton believes that the arrival of global law firms has increased competition in private practice to the point where it contradicts with firm rhetoric about flexible work practices. Business is booming for insolvency and restructuring lawyers with new figures showing corporate insolvencies at record highs. According to statistics released by ASIC, the number of failed businesses exceeded 2,500 for the third consecutive quarter earlier this year. Henry Davis York partner Jason Opperman said the knock-on effect of failing middle market businesses was significant not only for those businesses but also for contractors, suppliers and employees. And the Law Society of Western Australia has welcomed funding for a mental health court diversion program. The state government will commit $5 million over two years for an adult court diversion program and $1.7 million to place mental health experts in the children's court. I'm Stephanie Quine, thanks for watching. I'll be back next Friday with more stories in Australian law and business. <laughs>